For the first time in this class, we're going to acknowledge that, yes, the Western Hemisphere does exist, and we'll finally start to get into some of the cultures of the Americas. The Americas are often neglected in history classes, mostly because of the lack of written sources. Yes, there were cultures that developed written language, but there's just simply not as many as you see in the old world. Also, a lot of the written languages record that we have on paper were destroyed by the Spanish. The first civilization we want to talk about is the Olmec, which thrived in the southern coast of the Gulf of Mexico. Sites such as San Lorenzo are where archaeologists find prominent Olmec ruins. 1200 BCE urban centers and the Olmec culture emerges in modern Mexico. The Olmec are known for sophisticated urban planning, the creation of monumental artwork, and the construction of monumental architecture, which indicate a strong central government and the ability to mobilize the labor of the population over time. The Olmec were the first Mesoamerican culture to create an advanced calendar and possibly the first to discover the number zero. There's some debate whether the Olmec or the Maya were the first to use zero. Regardless, the Olmec started the trend of using these advanced calendars calendars in Mesoamerica. The next culture we're going to look at was located in what is known as the Valley of Mexico, which is located in the interior of Mexico. In the middle of the valley set Lake Texcoco. Today, the thriving metropolis of Mexico City sits here, and Lake Texcoco is no more. Still though, before Columbus arrived, this was the site to numerous civilizations throughout the centuries. Teotihuacan was a large city that we think governed much of the area around the Valley of Mexico. We don't know that much about Teotihuacan, but we do know that they flourished in the Valley of Mexico around 250 BCE to 600 CE. At its peak, the city had a population around 200,000 people. That's incredible for that time period. Crops were cultivated in flooded fields using the Chinampa system. Chinampas were essentially floating islands that you could grow crops on. It was a great way to utilize all the resources. The Aztecs will later utilize this Chinampa system in Lake Texcoco. The city controlled a large portion of central Mexico during its peak, including the vital Valley of Mexico. By 600 CE, most of Teotihuacan is destroyed for unknown reasons. After the fall of Teotihuacan, all the various civilizations in the region would view the ancient city of Teotihuacan as the city of the gods, because it was an abandoned city with these massive pyramids. And people that we'll talk about in a minute, like the Toltec and the Aztec, knew just as much about Teotihuacan as we do. It seemed like a very mysterious ancient place to all the civilizations that will follow. The next civilization we're going to cover is the Maya. The Maya thrived on the Yucatan Peninsula around 250 CE. Mayan culture was compromised of 40 city-states that flourished from modern-day southern Mexico into Honduras. Much of Mayan culture was adapted from the Olmec. The Maya had a complex culture with advancements in art, architecture, and mathematics. Remember, the Maya definitely used the number zero, though it's debated if they came up with it on their own or if it was adapted from the Olmec. They perfected the calendar that the Olmec used. It is important to emphasize the major difference between Maya, if you want to compare them to the later civilizations like the Aztec or the Inca, the Maya never unified into one massive empire. The Maya were always broken up into various city-states, almost similar to what we saw in ancient Greece. No one's for sure why, but around 800 CE, Mayan civilization began to decline. Historians debate whether this was caused by volcanic activity, warfare, disease, overpopulation, or soil exhaustion. But by 900 CE, the Mayan cities were abandoned. Please note though, the Mayans still live in the region even to this day, even though they didn't have these massive stone cities. In fact, the Mayan population was some of the last the Spanish had to defeat to take over all of modern day Mexico. The next civilization we want to talk about is the Toltec. So the Toltec existed in the Valley of Mexico after the decline of Teotihuacan. So the Toltec flourished in central Mexico. The Toltec were originally a nomadic people who migrated into the Valley of Mexico. The civilization was influenced by the Olmec, the Maya, and by Teotihuacan. The Toltec were militaristic and practiced human sacrifice. The Toltec capital was Tula. At its peak, the Toltec controlled much of central Mexico and the key Valley of Mexico. A lot of these themes we'll see repeat with the Aztec. 
The Aztec Empire stretched from modern day El Salvador all the way into modern day central Mexico. I know the spine outlook is massive and as impressive as some of the European and Asian empires we talked about, but remember, the people in Mesoamerica did not have any beasts of burden or any animals that they could ride on. All the transportation and all the information had to be transported by foot. Distances across the Americas would seem longer to your average person without the use of horses. As the Toltecs declined, the Aztecs migrated into the Valley of Mexico. At first, they struggled to integrate into the urban agricultural societies surrounded Lake Texcoco. The Aztec twin capitals of Tenochtitlan and Tlatelolco eventually developed on islands in Lake Texcoco. An alliance between these two other powerful city-states created the process to build a vast empire. The Aztec religion required regular human sacrifice, most victims being prisoners of war and of the noble class. The need for sacrifice led to the constant flower wars where Aztecs would just invade other kingdoms in order to capture enough people to fulfill the need for sacrifice. The Aztecs believed that the sun literally would not come up in the morning if they did not please the sun god Quetzalcoatl with sacrifice. Social promotion was possible by securing captives in battle. The Aztecs grew wealthy by collecting tribute from all these people that they took over, including May beans, cotton cloth, jade, gold, and of course, sacrificial victims. The Aztec Empire's peak was cut short by the Spanish. Whenever the Spanish arrived, the Aztec Empire had only stood for less than 100 years, and the Aztecs were still expanding. We'll get into the conquest in the next video. A lot of these Andean civilizations benefited from the Humboldt current that moves north, creating interesting climates throughout the Andean mountains. First, the Chavan. The Chavan civilization flourished in South America. First urban culture in South America, its capital, Chavan de Hantar, is located in modern day Peru. Chavan dominated economically, culturally, densely populated area across the Andean foothills. All right, next, the same geographic location, the Mushi, which came later. The Mushi was a capital city that dominated the area. The Mushi were first to use mita or a labor tax. Where every citizen was required to give a certain amount of labor per year for public works. The Mushi are best known for their engineering. Mushi built large adobe brick pyramids as well as large urban centers. For example, the Mushi civilization was home to the largest structure in pre-Columbian America or any of the civilizations in the Western Hemisphere before European arrival. Uh, and the big one in the Andes is the Inca Empire. Much like the Aztecs, the Inca rose late. They only existed for less than 100 years whenever the Spanish arrived. Early 1400s, the Inca were one of several military powers in the highlands of Peru. 1530, Huaracucha Inca consolidates power and establishes a hereditary monarchy with its capital at Cusco. The Incan Empire soon expanded across the Andes Mountains. Keep in mind, the Andes Mountains aren't the first place you would peg to have an advanced ancient civilization. The Inca had to conquer multiple peoples that lived across various climate ranges, different types of terrain. In short, it's historically impressive the empire the Inca were able to assemble in less than 100 years. Upon the emperor's death, political power would pass to the most able son, while wealth would pass to the rest of the family. This system led to where there was almost always a civil war after a transition of power. The Inca perfected the Mata system that we saw with previous Indian civilizations. Using Mata, the Inca were able to build an advanced highway system. They were also able to keep people fed using government warehouses and frozen potatoes. Some experts have compared this Inca system to socialism, where the government provides goods for the benefit of the entire population using a tax in this case the tax is labor. It is an interesting comparison, though this does predate ideas of Karl Marx and other socialist thinkers. The Inca also used an interesting system of record keeping called Kipu, which is a series of knots used on strings. We're not exactly sure how to read Kipu, but we know that the Inca were able to keep track of the amount of goods they had in resources. This is yet another reminder that civilizations can't be defined by strict definitions, but more with broad characterizations. The Inca is one of the most advanced civilizations that was standing at the time, and they did not have a written language. Before the Spanish even arrived, smallpox was brought to the area. So the emperor died of smallpox. This sparked a civil war between two of the sons. In the end, Altawapa defeated his brother, Huscar. The Spanish will arrive right after Altawapa wins a victory, and the entire empire is devastated. We'll get to that in the next video. I can't stress enough how both of these empires, the Aztec and the Inca Empire, had only been around for less than 100 years when the Spanish arrived, were still expanding, and in hindsight, it looks like their peak was cut short by the Spanish. And because world history is the history of all people, we have to be sure that we don't neglect the societies of the Americas.